Executive session minutes held on March the 7th, 2019. So, your second. second. Are, is there any discussion or questions? Do no. not call the vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes from the executive session on March 7th, 2019, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. There are no public comments. Is there Although I have a comment that somebody made to me that should have come here, but uh, she told me. Do you think I should uh, bring it up now? Do you feel that it should be brought up? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's worth bringing up. I don't know if there's worth an answer. Okay. Uh, she was complaining about the new circulation situation. She feels. She doesn't have any control if she asked for three books and before she'd get one book and then a few weeks later get another book. Now they all come at once and she uh, can't read that fast. Well, then she should ask for one book. That, that was my reaction. And I would also question whether or not that was really true because putting a hold on a book, even when we were standalone, um, depending on when the book came back or that kind of thing, we really didn't have a lot of control over that. So um, my recommendation would be, as Lima said, that um, if, if her concern is that she's getting too many interlibrary loan materials, that she may want to reconsider how many books she's putting on hold. Yeah. She also has the ability to um, suspend her holds for a while. Like if she gets one book and then um, she can, she can ask one of the librarians or the library staff to um, put a hold on one of her other, you know, kind of put a stop on uh -huh. one of her other holds until she's ready for that. Okay. So that's an option for her as well. She can just ask any of the staff and we can help her with that. I wasn't sure the options <coughs> she had used it, so. Oh, that's a positive development. Thank you. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, is there a president of the board on file? I don't think, do you not have anything, Emily? For the president's report? Uh, no, other than I'm sorry for not being there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, committee reports finance was canceled today. Um, it wasn't can Well, it wasn't canceled. Um, Eric reviewed the uh, financial statements. Um, they all, he indicated he thought they appeared in order. And if anyone has any questions for you. Then we're fine. I'll make a motion to accept the financial statements for March. Is there any discussion about that? There was, uh, yeah, what is there? There are two voided checks on there. Um, one was based, uh, based on the printer um, a malfunction, I believe, and then the other one was based on the a name that needed to be uh, corrected, so that was the one issue in terms of check register or anything else. Um, it was based on the view, pretty much similar. So. Uh, 
have been checks. Checks that have avoided were 3251 and 3311. Um, as Eric said, the one one was because we forgot to take the checks out and ran the check register. <laughs> and then the other one was an incorrect name. Terms of having those questions on the check register as well. Yeah, does anyone have any questions about There's no discussion about okay. If not, uh, take the vote, please. Okay. Um, I'll take the So just to, to so um, you're allowed to have someone attend uh, via other mechanisms, usually by phone, um, for three reasons. Usually, if someone's ill, uh, I think work, and there's one other. Um, being being on vacation is not one of those. <laughs> but um, as long as you have a quorum physically present, then someone can attend via phone, and and her vote counts and everything like that. It just wouldn't be um, we wouldn't be able to count her um, if there was not a physical quorum present. But yes, like so she can go to anything. Pardon? We all couldn't be like on my own, like through phone. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just meet by phone next month. <laughs> okay. So stop thinking about it. Yeah. Okay, we we'll call the. Oh, we just did. We did. It's true. I told you I would lose. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, does the facilities committee have any report? No. Policy committee? Policy committee was supposed to meet. Um, uh, due to my uh, scheduling error, um, we'll be meeting in May, prior to the May meeting. So. <coughs> uh, staff reports, director? Um, I think most things are in my written report. If anyone has any questions regarding that, let me know. Um, one of the things that did happen after our last meeting and I did send the board this but just in case you did if you didn't get the email we did receive um, the per capita grant award letter for 2019 funds um, in the amount of $29,087.50 um, which is uh, the highest amount that we could get for the per capita grant um, but again this is just the award letter <laughs> and this does, it, but and it does warn us that uh, Due to the continued payment backlog, these funds may be significantly delayed. We don't know when that is, but um, but we should be getting those funds from the state, so that was good news. And I think that was the only thing I needed to add to my report that wasn't that was written that we're not covering later. Any comments or any further discussion? Um, just the, the new facilities. Um, I said everything's working on the report. Yeah, he's been he's worked out really well. Like I said, I've gotten comments from a few different staff people um, about his demeanor, um, his work ethic. So I think it seems like he's fitting in really well. And um, yeah, so when things are getting done, and um, I think as I even mentioned, it's always good I think to have fresh eyes look at things. So he's he's brought a few things to my attention that hadn't I wasn't aware of already. So I think it was it, it's a good thing for us. That's good. Uh, corporate counsel. Nothing beyond uh, some, you know, back and forth that we've had uh, between Frank and Brian, Rip and I about just the real estate stuff, which we'll be discussing. Okay. <clears throat> Unfinished business. Sixty-two hundred Lincoln Build Avenue building update. Are we, do we have a need for an executive? Yes, I would recommend that we go okay. into executive session to discuss didn't, that. I didn't. I couldn't get it up on my computer. Okay. Yeah. We do. There is an offer. Um, of $310,000 if the board would like to counter. Um, we can discuss that in executive session. Okay. And, um, Just for another meeting. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll put that on hold for the executive. Uh, new, uh, new business, marketing and engagement coordinator position. Um, I just wanted to uh, let the board know that um, I know that I have talked about creating a marketing position for quite some time. We finally did that. Um, I've included the job description in your packets. Um, we were able to um, 
if this if this was a very organic process, and um, so Chad Camello, one of our adult services librarians, uh, has transitioned or is transitioning into that role, um, and uh, will be taking on a variety of tasks related to marketing and PR, but then also um, taking some of those um, those engagement, like community engagement things, like you know, we'll coordinate the farmers market stuff, um, you know the coming together stuff, that kind of thing, you know, the bike, the, the bike, bike, all of that kind of thing, so. Um, Would he be also a music buff? When we do things like with the museum or uh, park district or whatever. Yeah, so anything, kind of partnerships, yeah, and so I, we envision that role as kind of um, library-wide and not just for adult services and that kind of thing. So. Um, so for right now, as I mentioned in my, my report, he is still um, working on the reference desk, still doing some of his um, adult services librarian responsibilities as we you know, transition more fully to that. And this I do foresee this as being the first step in the creation of an actual department and then um, rearranging some, some staffing um, in terms of like you know putting the graphic designer that works um, out of the adult services department, and then we also have someone who that does graphics for youth services, and moving those into a separate department, and having that be um, more, a more true marketing PR. Yeah, we look to the future of uh, community marketing in the sense of fundraising. We have not. We have not yet. I mean, he just he literally started in, the in this position yeah, yes, it, last yeah, week. <laughs> but it's something that possibly in the future could be possibly. Um, since we are doing successful. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 yes, we can certainly look at things like that. I mean, something like that is more, um, and I know we've talked about this a lot, is, is foundation related. Right. Um, but, you know, certainly getting getting the, li the library more out there is going to be nothing but a positive for us as we look to, you know, potentially raise additional funds in whatever manner, mm -hmm. you know, going forward. So, yeah. But like I said, I just wanted to let the board know that you know we had finally gotten there with the position, and I think um, that would be a great fit for Chad. And um, as I said, kind of the first step in creating more of a, a national department so we can address those things on a more systemic level instead of you know adult services does one thing, youth services does another thing, and that kind of thing. You coordinate that kind of like a, mm -hmm. as part of the you see enough for you, enough for you. Is it gonna, when he transitions fully to the position. That both in the position or just more rearranging the staff? Um, we're, I'm still looking at that. Um, I've had some discussions with Natalia, the head of adult services, um, about the responsibilities uh, in the adult services department. We're looking at you know how busy all the service desks are, um, what their responsibilities are. So this is kind of an opportunity for, uh, for us to um, look at total hours overall and total responsibilities overall and see how that um, divides up. So we did actually just hire someone to replace um, uh, an adult services position that was vacated when Jenny, the, the previous, she was only here for five or six months um, when she left. But um, a few of the things that she was going to be, that she was responsible for when she was here, such as Farmer's Market and a couple of like um, MGPL on the go, that, will, that stuff is stuff that Chad will be doing. So the new librarian coming in will be, um, you know, he'll be doing desk time, collection development, and then that position also with the volunteer coordinator, and that takes quite a bit of time. So that will free up the new person to, to do that. So, and I believe his first day is May 1st. So. Does, he have <laughs> but, does he have background in marketing that he... Does Chad? Um, not pers no, not, not technically. Um, but he's done a lot of kind of outreach sorts of things since he's been here, and... Um, and when I wrote the job description, you'll note that um, you know I kind of looked to the future that if for some reason it's not him in that position, who would I get to fill that mm -hmm. position? And I did try to keep it geared more towards an actual marketing person. But I think for right now, this is a really it's good fit start. and a good start for us. Yeah. But it will. There will probably be some available hours that will need to be filled in adult services. We just haven't figured out how many that's going to be yet. How long has Jen worked for the library? In, in roughly, I'm just uh, three years. Oh, think. so he's been here. Yeah, while, but he knew. Okay, mm -hmm. that's yeah. his advantage. Yeah, he's got this yeah. background. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, I just wanted to. Know. Yeah, and he works really well with um, Karina, the graphic designer, and 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 so that was part of it too. Is that you know he had already built those relationships and has those relationships with staff and and um, uh, in the community. The and programs are lately have been phenomenal. 
Yeah, Bob, Bob actually gives them those uh, and stuff. So. I have a friend that comes from the far south side to your side. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so I just wanted to bring the board up to speed on what was happening with that. <clears throat> okay, uh, resolution number 2901. Transfer funds from operating to special reserves. I know there's a there is a the resolution. Um, why is it such a uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so the number the that percentage? is there is um, we usually leave two thousand dollars in petty cash, uh -huh. and the number um, reflected in the resolution reflects the um, amount we had in as of like Friday. Oh, yeah. So it's it's not the end of March. Okay. It's it was current as of Friday when, okay. when I wrote the All right. actual resolution. That's why it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it doesn't doesn't line up exactly. But this leaves um, two thousand dollars in the petty cash account after transferring. Okay. Uh, so do we have to make a motion yes. to? Okay, I'll make a motion to. to okay. Yes, please do. To approve resolution number 2019-1, resolution authorizing transfer of funds from the general library fund 10 to the special reserve fund 20. I would say in the amount of. In the amount of $9,335.23. One second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I hear a second? A second. Aaron seconded it. Do you want to uh, take the, the roll? Yes. Monzo? Uh, yes. Novik? Yes. Elitier, yes. Fuzo? Yes. Calumet? Yes. Yes. Mr. Jack. Yes. Yeah. Okay, next is the OSG map and placement proposal. So, um, in your packets, you have the Outsource Solution Group's proposal, um, which uh, is for the replacement of all of the staff map computers. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the server that we have to replace that has been slowly or quickly failing, um, that has had somewhat of a uh, domino effect in terms of the technology needs that we need to address in order to make sure that we uh, can continue to work. Um, so uh, right now uh, we have a, a somewhat of a mixed environment, well not even somewhat, it is a mixed environment. Um, with the uh, migration to uh, joining CCS and the migration to Polaris, the new um, the new ILS, we uh, replaced technical services computers with from Macs to PCs, and the circulation department has been replaced has had PCs replace the Macs. Um, there was some question about the software being able to run on Macs. Um, Macs also don't work very well in a networked environment. This has been a struggle for us all along. Um, previous employees, uh, Kevin uh, was a, a, a completely committed to us being a Macintosh environment. Um, it's not a great networking environment. Um, I can't. I we, I actually switched when I was here the first time because um, the director was using a Mac, but I couldn't access any of the accounting software. I needed a PC, so Blanche and I are also on PCs. So this uh, proposal is for the replacement of the remaining Macintosh computers um, that are primarily in adult services and youth services. Um, this is uh, this to nineteen thousand dollars replaces twenty two computers, and um, will allow us then to complete the migration to Office three sixty five. The server that we want to replace runs our um, is our Exchange server, so that's email. So um, and that is the one that is failing. Uh, it does other things as well, but it, it, one of the big things is does it runs email. And uh, so we're transitioning to Office 365, which is a cloud-based product. Um, but in order for the current Mac, <laughs> the current Macs don't access the internet very well. So for example, um, regularly uh, the staff have to, uh, just to give you an example, last week or um, Jess, one of the services librarians is texting me and she says, 
my computer has crashed 30 times in trying to access the internet. Oh, must be fun. So, um, and it's that kind of thing. And so they switch between Safari and Firefox and Google and trying to find the right browser so that things work. It makes it very difficult for staff to work. Um, there's also some issues with um, what we call the profiles of each staff person. It can take upwards of five minutes for people to log on to their computers. A lot of this has to do with the age of the Macintosh, but the Macs, and that they just don't perform as well in a networked environment. So I am asking for the board's approval to um, replace those Macs with PCs um, in this dollar amount that OSG has quoted us. As I said, um, I think this is a pretty good quote for 22 computers. I was going to say, it's a and, uh, we're going to own the computers? Pardon? We're owning yeah, and then we would own them. And these, these are the types of computers that we've replaced um, in tech services and circulation services. So all, all staff will have the same computer. And that will allow OSG to better serve us. They can put everything. Because the other issue we have with the Macs is that it's difficult to get them on um, the software that uh, allows for remote management yeah. of the technology. And so they can better able assist us. And this gives us an opportunity to look at you know kind of our network architecture and everything like that. So and it will all be installed in in-house. Yes. So what will happen is um, if the board approves this, I will notify OSG either tonight or tomorrow morning, depending on what time we get done here. Um, and they will um, get the computers. As of um, last time we checked, at the end of last week, they were all in stock. Um, they will kind of build the profiles um, at their offices, and they'll come out and we'll do the deployment all in one or two days so that everyone will be replaced at the same time. And that's included in this price. Yes. Yeah. So look, it's this is for the hard ones, but the price includes um, in the proposal. Uh, they do give the number of hours of work, yeah. but we had purchased a certain block of hours of time. But um, this will be uh, a huge step for this if the board approves this. It's one of the three big things I would like to do. Was this budgeted though? This was not budgeted, oh, okay. and I will be completely honest, a lot of the things that we're doing that are technology related were not budgeted because Ron had okay. prepared that budget, and so um, looking back at his budget documentation, he had a plan for some of the things, and I mean, looking backwards, um, it was not a bad move for us to make to move to a different to outsourcing this or to a different IT management. Um, this is not going to affect. It, it's not. I. I pro what I am going to be doing is um, through the month of May and June, as I start looking at next year's budget, um, I am going to be looking at this year's budget and uh, probably asking the board to approve um, moving some monies around between the budget lines um, okay. because we for sure are going to go over in technology but we're not going to spend other money that you know i may have budgeted somewhere else so um save money the sharing way because of the um position you have on some savings on yeah i mean there is some of that and, and you know we're, we're doing some different things with positions and that kind of thing so the this year's budget is a little bit um yeah, I don't want to say flexible. I mean, I'm still trying very hard to keep within that, but technology, certainly, if we made no changes, we would definitely go over right. and, you know, that's all of you. You're right, just because we're doing some things that were completely different, and and um, and we may, and because now we're, we're using um, an outsourced group, outsourced solutions group for IT, right now we're taking that out of the technology budget. We may choose next year, I may look at that and say it makes more sense to put that in maybe the professional services line or someplace else where mm -hmm. we do more of that consulting professional work. So, but for right now, it was just easiest to take it out of that. So, um, so we certainly have the money for it, but it, this was not budgeted for because this wasn't, it wasn't identified as a priority by the previous IT manager. I have another question. Yes. What will happen to the Max? Um, they will, so as part of our contract with OSG, they will do um, one or two kind of electronic recycling events for us. They'll go through everything and they'll recycle or dispose of it as appropriate. Um, I don't believe we can try to sell them, we can try to give them away. Um, I believe that they are old enough that they're probably not worth anything. Um, anymore. I, mean, I didn't think you could. I didn't think, how does this work? You can't sell them because isn't it paid by taxpayer? The, the way the law works, it says, is that you have to um, offer them to another governmental right. unit or another unit of government. I'm happy to ask the village if they want our 
tender old man. <laughs> like, no, I understand but yeah, that. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. But I, know, so, I mean, it's, it's so that's kind of the rule. Right. But I mean, we can also, I mean, if we have, you know, someone come in and say these are essentially large paperweights at this point, there may be no point no, no, of that. Right. And, then, okay. and then we would recycle them. Okay. So, um, but we have a complete wall full of, of old computers yeah. and a variety of things that you saw. I think we did the lab. We haven't done right. anything with that. Um, once we get through some of these kind of major products projects to make sure we don't crash our entire network, um, OSG will come in and help us go through that and determine what is still, um, what we could potentially sell, what is just not even worth trying to do that at this point. Because most so. people who are looking to stay within the system and you're introducing a new system by selling off 20. Yeah, I mean, and they're and they're Macs and they're old Macs. And so old I mean, Macs. it's and again, I mean, it's it, most businesses, most libraries. I mean, they they don't they, do they don't operate. I mean, you may have a Mac, you know, a MacBook, an iPhone, an iPad. I mean, I have those things as well. But in a business environment, almost everyone's on PCs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. These are all staff computers. Yes. Um, right. So there's going to be some access to these ones. You want to use like a Mac for compatibility thing? I'd like for the public. Yeah. Well, the the DML, the digital me, digital media lab, does have a Macintosh computer in it right now, okay. so um, yeah. But the other internet, Did yeah. Sneezing because I, I can't let it go from sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, but um, but the other that, like the computers in the computer room are all PCs, and eventually we'll need to replace those as well because the other thing that's happening is that. The, um, Tech services and circulation services are, um, they have new computers and they're now on Windows 10. Blanche and I are still on PCs, but we're still running Windows 7, and window um, support for Windows 7 is ending. So don't that's another that. reason. Don't yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's a whole, there's a lot of reasons that it makes sense for us, um, and I'm asking the board to approve this purchase. So. I want to clarify those. Yep. Um, so uh, you see, you have in your packet the contract that I signed pending board approval. Um, so the public copier, the copier printer, and the adult services workroom uh, are both uh, leased copiers, and that lease uh, ends at the end of this month. So we would have to um, either resign or replace those. We're looking to replace those. Um, the I take that back. The um, the copier printer and admin and the copier printer and the adult services workroom are, are both they still leases end at the end of April. Uh, the copier in for the public we actually own and it's fairly old and um, we have talked about replacing that for a few years now. Um, I met with Impact Networking. They do uh, copier and print management as well as IT support, but we're not using them for that. <coughs> And they came in and they gave, um, they did an assessment of all of our copy print needs across the library on um, all printers and copiers as, as well, not just the copiers, but the printers um, around the building. And they determined that, so they gave me some breakdowns and we looked at like what we spend in paper, in toner, in, um, in the copy, the leases and everything like that. And right now, if we break it out monthly, we spend about $1,900 a month on um, copiers, printing, um, toner is a big one. We spent, last year, um, we spent $12,000 for toner. Um, so uh, Impact is uh, proposing replacing the admin, admin uh, printer copier and the adult services workroom printer copier with uh, new units, Kyocera units. They have recommended a couple of them. Um, getting a new copier for the public, which will have color, 
uh, duplex co um, copying, so some, uh, you know, the ability for people to bring in flash drives and print directly from flash drives, so some things that people have been asking for for a long time. Um, and so and they also then will manage all of the toner and printers around the building. We'll also be getting a couple of additional printers um, in areas that don't have one that need one, such as the, uh, the youth services workroom does not have their own printer in there. They have to run either across the department or to use like a color one, they have to go all the way upstairs to the second floor. So, um, so we're adding a couple of additional printers, replacing some uh, of our old copiers with new. And then they will manage all the toner, paper, uh, everything's automated. Um, once the system is set up, they will um, connect all of the printers to their kind of desktop or to their software, which automatically reads like if uh, the, the toner needs to be replaced, we don't have to call them or anything. They just know that they need to send it. So, um, yeah, it's really nice. I'm just like, oh, just do it now. Um, but then, and then the monthly costs, um, you know, amortized out are actually cheaper. Um, so that would be a monthly cost with um, newer technology, uh, you know, easier, less staff time having to manage them for $1,700 a month. So I'm asking the board um, to, to approve the proposal. I have a question. Yes. The the copy machines that this the public uses those they pay for that right? To the public. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the public pays for any copies or printouts that they make. You don't know what that generates. I mean, does it generate enough to play for toner or? Um. You know, it's it's income. We put it in the in the revenue line. Oh, okay. I mean, so, that, so if you look at income. yeah, okay. it's just. I mean, there is a line for for copying. I think okay. so. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, what we'll be doing? It's not a lot of money. I mean, right. basically, it's you know. I mean, we're doing it to break even. Right. So, okay. Just um, yeah. Yeah. Is there any advantage of trying to reduce the number of different printers? Have more uniformity in the printers? Um, well, that we're actually trying to do that. So the new machines that that Impact has has proposed for us, for at least the copiers and the copier printers, um, the one for the public, they're all, they're almost the same machine. I mean, some of them, some in some places it doesn't make sense to do that because you don't have the same. Um, needs you don't have it doesn't you don't you don't run the same number of, of right. copies that kind of things it's just not used as much that sort of thing so it doesn't make sense to spend a bunch of money on a really high end mm -hmm. powerful really super fast copier if if right. you know it's in let's say Natalia's office where she's not printing a right. ton of things right. but she does need something that's reliable and can do you know double sided and those kinds of things so you know we want the the kind of higher end stuff to be where it's I mean, really getting is, the heavy between jobs and my own is uh, the toner, in particular the colored toner, whether it comes as three separate cartridges yeah. or one cartridge, and you're wasting the the cyan and uh, yeah, every every all the ones that we're looking at are, um, I believe they all have separate colored toner cartridges. That's one so. thing that frustrates the heck out of me. Because I, I understand what you're saying is that some of the older color copiers they had one toner that and they, they mixed it different ways and so it was it was different so this way you just replace the toner right. in the color that needs to be replaced because I have one that's one now and right. I'm and wasting you said they so much. Remotely figure out, but then how do you get that toner? I mean, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll know when we need it, but when we they send it to us in time. <laughs> yeah, they should. I mean, they're pretty local. For one thing, mm -hmm. so um, but they're, what they'll do is they set it up so that when there's like twenty percent left, oh, it's not going to be so like you know you're, you're going to run out of yellow yeah. in the next five copies, it's you know that right. kind okay. of thing. It'll be it's when it hits a sure certain threshold, yeah, and then um, so it, it, it'll be it, you know just that alone is it's it, you know when I look at what we spend on toner and we literally have three different people in the library that that are in charge of different toner depending on what Blanche orders some. The computer assistants order some, and then someone else orders. I think Melissa orders some, and so it's and it's, it's very crazy. yeah, it's all different. So it's very kind of disconnected right now. So this would kind of pull it all into one place, and then you know Lance spends a lot of time looking for the cheapest paper 
you know, and I, I sometimes have to say, you know, how many hours did you spend looking for the cheapest paper? Right. And so, you do that. You right. You want to get the best. Right. Paper. So yeah. this way, it, it minimizes some of that staff time on those really menial, you know, clerical tasks mm -hmm. and frees them up. So it's like box for paper. Yeah, it depends. I mean, she's she's been pretty good about getting getting the deal, but I mean, if you balance it out against what does it cost us as an organization to employ her to spend X number of hours to look for cheap paper, right. you know. So, I mean, our staff time is not free. Right. So. so this proposal is, will be paying $17.85 per month. That's, yes. Okay. Yeah. And that includes all of the new stuff, the toner, the paper, everything. And then this yeah. number, the 35? Yeah, those, that's, that's kind of the, like, that's the, the initial. Paying. Yeah. Okay. It's, so I'll be kind of first and last month. Oh, okay. So that's yeah. a question. Oh, question. Yeah, where it says um, oh, meter rigid. type and the allowances. Mm -hmm. So they're basing it on current use. Yes. So they've looked at all of the the status, all of the you know kind of print uh, amounts from all the different printers sure and copiers. And they'll look at that with us every month. And um, if we need to make adjustments, they'll do. They'll help us out with that. Yeah, because I mean, the black and white seems like most people would do black and white, but you want to make sure that yeah. you're providing. Them yeah. So and the thing, and the nice thing too is there'll be a dashboard we can monitor that use throughout the month and stuff, and so we can know when we're getting close and if we have to make some adjustments. They're not going to check up rates significantly. Probably not. Like your phone plan. Well, that's what I'm afraid of. Like, well, we do pay for overages now. I mean, if you, I mean, Carlotta sees the Xerox bill and stuff, but we pay, um, it can vary, but I think they've been pretty generous with the amounts that they've given us because it is based very much on current use. And is this a, um, the contract is for how long? 60 months? Am I reading this right? Right. Yeah. So that these prices will stay in the back for 60 right. months. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's absolutely true. Yeah, well, and the nice thing is, I mean, and the timing really worked out pretty well for us. I mean, we were able to get in really, I, I, I think we were very fortuitous because um, I wasn't aware, I, I, I wasn't aware that the Xerox leases were up in April. And the thing is, is they don't really tell you. No, they don't. They, um, and if you don't end it, they just keep charging you. Yeah. Even right. though, right. and so, you know, and for the one, we're paying, you know, six to seven hundred dollars a month on it. Yeah, per mm -hmm. month? That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Just just for one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and this is fairly, this is fairly um, standard mm -hmm. in kind of copier terms. And um, so, and they seem, like I said, really great to work with. And they service everything. them too. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, what will happen, which is also very nice, I was talking to Natalia about this and she was like, can we do it now? Um, <laughs> once, like, oh, yes. Yeah. Once um, we get this set up, they'll come in and, um, you know, they're going to replace everything, but then they'll tag every single printer with um, something that has their name and phone number, but also has a, a QR code on it. That you can just scan with your phone, and we'll send that immediately off to them, saying that we need to toner for this, or this machine needs service. Technology. Yeah. Wow. So I mean that right there, just it, because right now we don't really have someone. I mean, OSG would do that for us, and we relied on whoever was doing IT before to kind of troubleshoot some of this. And so, I mean, we have printers that are literally 10 to 15 years old in different parts of the library that are just really you know, it's so more than a life. What? Right. So the, actually, they said that our average printer is um, nine years old, and industry average should be about five, just because. Yeah, so, um, so again, another area that um, you know we've kind of made do, but I mean, there's been such strides in technology and that kind of thing that it really is to our benefit, and it will be, end up being cheaper for us you know, as we do mm -hmm. that. Medical insurance, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we'll raise them in a way and we yeah. have a yeah. no. <laughs> But it, it will also save us yeah. money and again staff so, time for us. So I think we could call a question. Yes. So did we already Oh I, I tried. Motion to <laughs> accept the impact net, networking copier printer proposal in the amount of seventeen hundred eighty five dollars per month. I'll second it. Okay, Pelletier, yes. Who's up? Yes. Calumet? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Mesa Jack? Yes. Monzo? Yes. Novick? Yes. Okay, is there anything in the paper? 
Um, you know, uh, just the for capital uh, more about no public comment, non agenda items. Uh, anything else, or are we going into executive session? I don't. I don't have nothing else unless the board tells me. No public. No, there's no public. Okay, then uh, I move that this is, we go into executive session, setting of a price for sale or lease of property owned by the public library is filed for 5 ILCS 120-2C6. Does it have to be seconded? It needs to be seconded. Did you second it? Oh, I said it because I said it. Also. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> Then uh, I forgot the I forgot these steps. <laughs> Rizzo? We have actually. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we go down to two? Yes. Calvin? Yes. Calvin? Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Mesa Jack? Yes. Lonzo? Yes. Novick? Yes. Pelletier? Yes. 